Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. What a day the Lord has made, and we are to rejoice and, and be glad in this wonderful day the Lord has made. We Our desire is to for us as God's people to live a life, rest of peace, and experiencing God's best in our lives. So we're going to be dealing today with grieving the Holy Spirit leads to unrest in our lives. See, God wants us to experience a life of ease and rest. And how do we experience this kind of life? We're going to deal with that today. And uh, so I continue to talk about rest in the Lord. And I pray, and my prayer is that by the end of this week, we would have learned so much on how to really walk in a place of peace, rest, and experiencing shalom, where nothing is missing, nothing is broken in your life. Invite someone to join us right now as we go right into this teaching right now. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, you are so faithful. There is no one like unto you. Speak to us by your spirit. Take us to that realm. Only you can do it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. See, life is spiritual and God wants us to experience him in a dimension which he has destined for us to live in. So walking in, in the realm of the spirit, it requires you to be in a place of peace and in a place of rest. A place where the spirit communicates with the spirit. A place where there is continuous flow of unlimited resources. A place where you experience God's best. The place where light shines and darkness dissipates. One important aspect of our walk in the Lord is to realize the place of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And if we must experience walking with God in the Spirit, if we must experience the higher dimension of the realm of God, the God, the realms of God. If you must experience to be in a place where you are the downloaded version of God on this earth, you must understand the importance of staying in complete koinonia with the person of the Holy Spirit. We are continuously in tune with him and not grieve him. When you grieve the Holy Spirit, it leads to unrest in our lives. It takes you to the place where you function less than your optimal capacity. The Bible will tell us in Ephesians 4 verse 29 to verse 32 that we should grieve not the Holy Spirit. And they begin to talk about um, what it means and how it means what it takes to grieve him. And we dealt with some of that the other day. We're going to deal with that today. So the Holy Spirit is very sensitive. He has feelings and can be hurt or it can be quenched. Now to grieve somebody would be to be put a place in a place of distress, to make sorry, to cause grief and to pain. So grieving the Holy Spirit really occurs when our words and our heart condition hinder him from flowing. When the Holy Spirit is not grieved in our lives, we experience the fruit of the unlimited presence of God at work in our life. So what then grieves the Holy Spirit? Let's talk about that in a moment. If you go back to Ephesians 4 verse 31, it tells us, let all bitterness, all wrath, all anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Malice means intention to do evil. You know, malice intention to do evil. And remember, that God looks on the God, man looks at the man looks at the outward, but God looks at your heart. Working with God and experiencing God flow in your life. It's very important that for that to happen in optimal capacity, you have to allow yourself 
not to be affected by what happens around you. What changes the flow of the Holy Ghost in your life is what happening within you and also the words you speak. So don't let anybody or anything limit your peace or result in engraving the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is grave and when its activities in your life and its manifestation of his presence stays dormant. It stays dormant in your life when you are filled with bitterness and rage, holding grudges, refuse to forgive, allowing ill and evil intention towards one another, you know, to stay in your heart. You know, you may argue that your actions are right in your eyes, but, but God looks at your heart, he looks at your spirit, your intentions. That's why your motives have to be right all the time. So the lack of peace or the lack of rest or the unrest in our life is an indication something is wrong. And each of the things that I've mentioned that grieves the Holy Spirit is a response to failing to address the pain and the hurt that arises in relationships. There are pains you've experienced from your loved ones. There are things that have happened in your relationship and, and your response and failing to address the pain and the hurt puts you in a place of grieving the Spirit of God. Because when you are hurt, it leads to anger and then resentment creeps in, then bitterness comes in, then malice, then evil speaking. And these are the things that grieve the Spirit of God and keeps Him from flowing effectively in your life. No wonder you pray and you don't see results. No wonder nothing is working in your life. You have to watch, look inward. So, the thing that we mentioned grieves the Holy Spirit. And uh, you might be watching me now and you feel so much hurt. Somebody must have hurt you. And, and you are, the hurt leads to anger. Anger. I want to talk about that today as well. Why are you so angry? Of course, anger will lead to resentment. Resentment leads to bitterness. Bitterness leads to malice and the evil speaking. It's all because you were hurt. Now, why are you so angry? Let's talk about that as well because, because it is the anger that brings about the other things we just, we just listed that could grieve the Holy Spirit. So the Bible tells us, Ephesians 4.26, some of you like that scripture, be angry, but sin not, let not the sun go down upon your anger. You know, and what I would say to those who say, you know, the Bible says I should be angry, it's like, make sure that before it gets dark, you, you get over it. It's okay to have feeling of anger, and but you must manage them or it becomes a disease of the heart and grieves the Holy Spirit. Because angry, when we get angry, when we, we get angry, when we don't get, when we don't get what we want or what we think we deserve. People get angry when they don't get what they want or what they don't get, what they think they deserve. And when we feel our right or entitlement have been taken away, anger sets in. And the anger leads to the place where you begin to have resentment and bitterness and malice and evil speaking. And what happens, it grieves the Holy Spirit and it keeps you from experiencing God's best for your life. Anger. When you feel your rights have been taken away, when you feel that your entitlement has been taken away, anger. Somebody takes something from you or somebody owes me something. When there is anger in their heart, it will always find a way of expression. Anger must express itself. And, uh, and there are some of us watching now that internalize anger. And when you internalize anger, you suffer from depression, sadness, apathy and withdrawal. When you externalize anger, you tend to want to pay back revenge. You explode. You tend to talk to others to justify your feelings and your curses. Because you are, ex you are extending the anger. The so anger is a contagious heart disease that is destructive. Become angry with everybody.
because now the disease is so contagious that you get so angry. And I love what the Bible tells us here in, in chapter 22 of Proverbs, Proverbs 22, 24. Make no friendship with an angry man or with a furious person. Or you shall, or a man, you shall not let, you shall not go lest you learn his ways and set a snare to your soul like Iri Katamandi La Kopaya. Hmm. Satu Kamati Kele Kapara. See, you see, you see that, you see that, you see that. So anger becomes disease of the soul, of your heart. And when you make friends with angry people, sooner or later, you learn their way and you become angry person yourself. But you got to deal with anger so that you don't miss out on God's best for your life. You can experience a life of peace and joy when you understand how these things work. Now, so how do you deal with anger? What are the prescriptions to deal with anger? The Bible tells us in Ephesians 4.32, it said, Be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Now, there is the remedy, but how to apply it? How do you apply that remedy? The remedy to anger is very very kindly be kind to one another, be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ's sake has forgiven you. That is the remedy right there. So you have to identify who you are angry with. There's somebody that I know, you know in the recent day, the person has been so angry before, and I look at them now, they're full of joy. Somehow, God. They've dealt with that anger situation, and then you can see the peace of God radiating from your heart. You can see rest, you can see tranquility, and they are prospering because anger is no more your lifestyle. So you have to identify who you are angry with. You need to address the source of the anger. Who do we hope you never want to see again? <laughs> Larry Kosa Katamaya. You're watching. Yes, there are people you hope you never want to see in your life again. Who do you hope to pay back? They have wronged you so much. Who do you hope will severely fail? You know, you watch it. You're born again, but in your heart, you are so angry that you are wishing that person would fail. Yes, I'm talking to you. You are wishing that you're going to pay them back. You, you are just so angry in your heart that you, want, you don't want to see them again in your life. You don't want to see them ever again in your life. You want them to fail. You want whatever they do not to work out for them. You see? The Holy Ghost is grieved when you are in that place. And you never experience the flow of prosperity, the flow of divine health in your life because you are internalizing anger and you are finding a way to express it out towards other people. So you know, identify who you are angry with. And then two, you have to determine what they owe you. <laughs> What they owe you, because many times we we you, so you cannot you cannot generalize what they owe you. You have to be specific. There's somebody that tells me, you know, he must come to apologize to me, or she, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I remember somebody said he must pay me thirty thousand dollars for what they did to me. They took away something I I love so much. They have to pay me back. Now, this person is angry. What do they owe you? You cannot be general. You have to be specific. What do you want? What do you feel entitled to? What did they take from you? Until you know what lost, what you lost, you are able to relax. What does this person owe you? What did they take from you? What do they need to do to put the matter right? You have to ask yourself these questions. And you have to come to the place where you really get to the next place of grieving the loss because you may never receive back what you are wanting them to pay you. So you have to grieve the loss. You cannot just override your feelings. You, so how do you feel about the loss? You have to express the grief constructively. You got to acknowledge the feeling that you have harbored in your heart. All right, so we're dealing with this now, helping you to deal with the anger because you are watching and you see the way your life is going in a direction that you don't want to go because you're angry inside of you about somebody, something. You are angry about one thing you must do. You have to know who you are angry with. Number two, determine what they owe you. Number three, grieve the loss. And number four, you got to cancel the debt and forgive them. Oh, really? Nobody owes you anything.
anything. Kalikuri katamande. Until you come to the place in your life where you don't have the that entitlement spirit, where you stop all that feeling he owes me, this you got to pay back this. I did this for him. You have not when you until you get out of that mindset, you got to stay angry with your life and then you continue to miss out on God's best for you. Because when you are angry, you grieve the spirit, and when you grieve the spirit, you are put in your place, you are it leads to a place of unrest in your life. So you have to cancel the debt. That's why it tells us Ephesians 4.32. He said, forgive him one another as God has forgave you. Jesus Christ endured the pain and forgave. He released us from our debt. He did. He did. You know, have you made any bitter judgments? You have to renounce and cancel the judgments. Maybe there are some words you have spoken against that person. Maybe you've said to yourself, they would never be good or they would never succeed. you got to cancel it. you got to renounce it. Because what you throw at others have the power to come back to you. What you wish others may be coming to you. Before you wish them evil and you wish them they fail in their life or they fail in their relationship or they fail in their finances or they fail in their ministry, you watch out because what you make happen for others, you are making it happen for you indirectly. You renounce and cancel the judgments you've passed on them because of your anger. You ask the Holy Ghost to forgive you from holding on to wrong attitude and from giving, grieving him. And then you have to begin to pray for the person to be blessed. I know that may be hard for some of you, but if you're going to get out of the anger, if, if you're going to stop grieving the Holy Ghost because of your anger, you have to pray for the person to be blessed. The Bible tells us, John 2, 14, it says, we know we have passed from death unto life when we love. You see, when you love your enemy, you pray for them. Matthew 5, 44, you love your enemy, so you pray for them. You are not, you are not free until your heart is free. You have to picture the person as you pray and release blessing over their life. Jesus said, come unto me and I will give you rest. And you have coming unto Jesus Christ, so letting go of the anger in your heart. When you let go of that anger, when you let go of that anger, that anger that I lead to the, that have led you to the place of resentment, when you let go of the anger that have led you to that place of bitterness, the anger have led to resentment, that have led to bitterness, led to malice and evil speaking, you got to let go. You have been hurt, but you know, where you are going is bigger and better than where you're coming from. There is no point holding on to the things of yesterday and missing out for the things of tomorrow. Your tomorrow is brighter than your yesterday. Instead of you holding on to the past, I was hurt, they messed my life up. Why don't you let go and let God and begin to look ahead because what is in front of you is bigger and better that was behind you. And that's how we flow in the Holy Ghost. That's why you see miracles, signs, and what are taking place in our lives. Because we have decided consciously to let go of the hurt. Don't let it build onto anger. Don't say, my parents were angry, so I have to, I have to be angry. As anger is a disease. It's not of God. It's not of God. It's not because we'll let it go. So you can enjoy the life of peace. Because it is God moves in our life when there's peace. The Spirit of God works the greatest when He's not grieved, when there's peace. And when you experience that peace of God in your heart, you'll be amazed how prosperity will chase after you. You want to have a long life? Have peace. You want to prosper financially? Have a lot of financial blessing in your life? It begins with the condition of your heart peace of God, the rest of God, when you strive to enter into his rest, you will see the things that God has in stock for you coming to you with no stress. Man, I am out of time, but I know you've been blessed by this teaching. I want you to share this. I'm going to continue with this again tomorrow. So log on again as we continue dealing with this important subject of rest, because until you get to the place of rest, you've not started living yet. <laughs> Try it out. Until you get to the place of rest, you've not started living yet. When you get to the rest, ease, peace, then life has begun. Not all this anxiety and fighting and fussing, messing up 
and not enjoying God. You got to enjoy God. You are made in the image of God. You have to enjoy God and enter the place of rest and let go of the hurt and see God move in your heart and see the Holy Ghost transform you into the person he has always wanted you to be. Until we see you again tomorrow. Remember this. You have been destined to win and there is nothing the devil can do about it. Keep on walking by faith and not by sight. Your victory is already guaranteed. Enter into that place of rest and you will enjoy your best life ever. Forgive them. Don't, don't stay angry. Get out of that. You see God bless you tremendously. Until we see you again tomorrow, God bless you.